This is about David. David was, he was hunted by Saul. He meant he was fleeing from Saul and running from Saul. And, but David got him a group of men. You know, he was in the cave of uh, Dulam, the, they call it. And he got in that, in that cave, and there was a lot of people there. The men came. There was about 600 men came in. They were, the Bible said they were, oppressed and depressed and, and, and just just in trouble. Amen. They were in trouble. And David got these young men and he began to use them as soldiers. And he was the, David was the captain of the army. So anyway, he, he, we, we find here in this scripture where I'm just going to read the sixth verse and then I'll, I'll go down and start at the first verse again. It says, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord how many ever had to encourage yourself in the Lord we have to a lot of times we got to encourage yourself because you don't get too many encouragement from a lot of people well we should encourage one another but David, as I said, he had to encourage himself. These people were so depressed. They were so upset. And I'm going to read to you why they were so upset. And he says, and it came to pass, starting the first verse of the 30th chapter, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziklag and submit, smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that were therein and they slew not any either greats or small but carried them away and he went on their way so David and his men came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and there was and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. That would be a, a, a reason to weep, wouldn't it? That was a, a dis, discouragement, and it, it was a tragedy that their whole families were taken. Amen. Their town was destroyed by fire, and, and the, their families were taken. And David, amen, uh, when, the, when they begin to see what happened, they wept and they cried until there was no more tears. You ever, you ever cry like that? You ever weep sometimes until you're, you just can't weep no more? And that's the way they did. They cried and they wept. But, you know, David wanted to do something about it. They were so, they were so upset because of their families were all gone that they began to uh, want to pick up stones and stone David. David was their leader. Amen. Sounds a little bit familiar, don't it? Want to pick up stones and stone them because they're, amen, they're leaders and they want to do something. Amen. But anyhow, David, man, he, he wanted to do something about it. David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself he got a amen he, David said unto 
Abathar the priest, Abelich's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the, the ephod, and Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. You know, they sing a song sometimes, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what belongs to me. You know, David, as I said, David interceded as a priest. See, only the priest could intercede to God, but David was like a type of a priest. He was, he was like a, a priest, and he, he took, amen, asked for the epithet, which they had to prepare themselves in order to go into the presence of God. And I believe we, do, we have to do the same thing. We've got to prepare ourselves. We just can't come any old way into the throne room of God. I know the Bible tells us to come boldly into the throne of God, that we can cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. But there's, there's certain things that we have to prepare ourselves, amen, in order to get into the presence of God. In prayer, we've got to come humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. How many knew that? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he would exalt you in due time. Praise God, just humble yourself before the Lord in prayer and wait upon God. Don't get in a hurry. Just wait upon God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not paint. The scripture says, praise God, we got to wait on God. Amen. And, and, and get the mind of the Lord. David had to wait upon the Lord. He asked God. He asked God, should I pursue after these people? Should I go after him? Amen, I don't know. Sometimes people would say, well, I'm gonna go after him. If I don't hear from God, I'm going anyway because I want my family back, amen. But David was cautious. He wanted, amen, to make sure that God was gonna get his family back, bring it, everything back that he lost, amen. How many knows God wants to bless you and give you back what the enemy has taken from you? He's wanting you to be blessed, amen. And the enemy's out there trying to, you know, Jesus called it in the scriptures, Jesus said the thief coming up, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy men's lives. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So we can have abundant life in serving God tonight. Amen. There's steeper depths in God. We don't have to just get in the, in the shoreline and just get a little bit, a little dab. Amen. We're going to have to get in there all the way. And, and just like David, he put on that that their effort, he put it on as a as a type of a getting into the presence of God, and he prayed and he sought the Lord and he wanted to know the will of God. How many knows we should want to know the will of God for our life? We need to know the will of the Lord for your, our life. You know, a lot of people don't seem to be too interested in getting the mind of God to find out what God wants them to do. Man, we got to get steadfast. We got to get a hold of God. And we can't, amen, just be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We're not going to be moved from our faith, from our foundation. But, uh, amen, as sure as you're here today, the enemy would like to just to, to pull you away from the faith of God and get you back in the world and get you doing the things that you used to do. Many people have done that. Many people have left the faith. That's Bible, it's Scripture tells us many depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. But we don't, want, we don't want to do that. We want to stay steadfast in the faith. Be unmovable. Amen. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that you're not going to be moved. Get, amen. Get established in the faith. Amen. Get so established in the faith that nothing can move you. Amen. What can separate you from the love of God? The, Paul was preaching into the Romans. He said, what can separate you from the love of God? There's neither depth no height, nor angel, nor principalities, or powers, or even death can separate you from the love of God. How many know that? If you got Jesus, go ahead, give him a good clap offering. If you got Jesus, praise God, nothing can separate you from the Lord. Amen. But think about these men now. These men were thugs, 600 of them. They just got back from fighting in 
defeating an enemy and they got back into the camp and found out that their camp was the amen devoured destroyed by fire and all the possessions and their family was taken away amen that would be a depressing thing amen i was thinking about the the on the news the other day you've probably seen it amen about this boat in in branson missouri Man, they were out on the water and, and it came a storm all at one time and the, and the boat sank. And there was nine people in one family died in that. There was others died, but there was nine people in this one family had died. And that would be a depressing thing for our loved ones to be taken out. She said our children was taken out. Our kids was only three and seven, maybe or something, nine or something like that. And there's three of them was taken out. Her husband was taken out. Man, it would be a depressing thing. But see, these people here were depressed too. They were depressed. That's what it says here. And they lifted up their voices and wept until they could not weep anymore. You know, I believe if we really want something from God, sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to get down and wait upon God until God, we touch we touch the throne of God. How many believe you can touch the throne of God tonight? You can touch the throne of God today. Praise God. And we need, we need to we, we need to get a vision for the lost and the dying because there's so many souls out in the world that's without Jesus that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. And the only way they're going to know about Jesus is for somebody to preach to them, testify to them, pray for them in order for them to get saved. Just like somebody did for you or me, somebody had to testify to you and tell you about the saving grace of the Lord. Somebody had to preach the word of God to you. How many knew that? Somebody had to sing a song like when I got saved, the song that got to my heart was softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Amen. And that song got down deep in my spirit and it caused me to go to the altar and cry and pray and seek the face of God, amen, and I was determined. I wasn't, I wasn't going to let up until I got an answer from God, and I got an answer. I got saved. Amen, salvation is real. Anybody can have religion. There's religions. Even Satan has a religion. Satan has his own Bible. I said Satan has his own Bible. He has his own religion. And he's out there pulling people away from the truth, from Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior, the Lord of glory. And he's out there building their own church, amen, and drawing people away from God. But there's going to be a great judgment day, like I said this morning. There's going to be a judgment day, amen, and all the wicked and corrupt people that's going to stand before God in judgment day, but it will, it will be too late then. How many knows that? I said, it will be too late. If they don't serve God in this life, they're not going to be able to serve him in the next one. How many knew that? Paul said, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. And, you know, we don't have to wait to get to heaven to get some blessings from God. We can get blessed, and we are blessed. If you're blessed, say, I'm blessed. <laughs> Amen. We are blessed tonight because we have a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How many knows your, 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 your Savior's in you tonight? Greater is he that's in you than he that's within the world, praise God. So we got to keep this up. We got to keep seeking God and keep the faith. Keep the faith. But as I said, these men begin to weep and cry because their family was taken and gone. David had to encourage himself. You know, people wanted to pick. They wanted to pick up stones to stone him to death because they were angry. We were with you, David. We were out there fighting the war. We were out there defeating the enemy. And now we come back, and now uh, our families are gone. And our town is destroyed, burnt up. So David had to encourage himself. Amen. It's in Samuel, 1 Samuel 30th chapter and the 5th verse. If some of you are still looking for it. It's there in the Word of God. David prayed. He sought God. Thank God, you know, David was a man of God. And, and, you know, just because you're a man of God 
don't mean that you're going through, you're not going to be going through any problems. You know, some people say, I thought when I got saved, I wasn't going to have no more troubles. I got news for you. Your troubles, amen, you're going to have troubles. But through it all, through your troubles and your trials and your tests, God is going to strengthen your inner person. He's going to make you a stronger Christian. How many know that? You can stand up and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. Just get God moving in your heart, moving in your life. I tell you, it's the best thing that can you in, can happen to you. When the devil starts throwing wor- words at you and spiritual stones at you, amen, it'll just bounce off of you because you're not going to let it hinder you from making heaven your home. It's not going to hinder you from doing the work of God because, uh, amen, the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. Jesus told the group there, he said, look unto the fields. You say they got four months yet to harvest, but he said, you look under the fields, for they are already white to harvest, for the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. God, amen, wants to get you to, to, matter of fact, he said, pray that the Lord of harvest will send labors into the harvest field that they might reap uh, a souls. And we are the ones that God's wanting to reach, amen, and use to go out there and win souls into the kingdom. How many believe that? If you believe it, say amen. Hallelujah. David, God called him. I believe I preached it a couple weeks ago, amen, about how God sent Samuel down to anoint David, amen, and how David was called to be a king. See, the king that they had was Saul, and God didn't call Saul to be a king. People wanted him to be the king. Amen. So he, he meant, he, and Samuel was upset over it. I said he was up so upset over it because de, that, uh, that Saul was going to be the king. And God told him, he said, don't, don't fret it. Don't worry about it. I'll just give him the desires of the heart. It's only a temporary thing anyway. It's just going to be temporarily. Amen. King de, uh, Saul isn't going to be king for eternity forever like you know back in those days they were king amen till they died and then their children would take over but David amen God raised up David to be a king and he had to fight for it first battle that he had was going up against Goliath how many know that King Saul, amen he was in his tent he wasn't going out there he wasn't going out to fight the battle Amen. And, and and his soldiers, they weren't they weren't out in the open. They were hiding behind in foxholes. Amen. Because this man Goliath was a human giant. Amen. He was probably nine feet tall. Amen. He was a powerful looking man. And no one was wanting to go out against him. But David came on the scene, just a young boy. Just a young boy. He came up and he looked and he says, well, what are you doing here in these foxholes? You, amen. He said, I'm not afraid of this giant. I'll fight him. I'll fight this Goliath. Amen. Everyone has a, a, a battle of some kind in their life. So you might not be at the Goliath part yet. You might just be with the, the bear and the lion. Amen. You might be with a smaller battle. And according to that, it would be a big battle for us. Amen. To have to fight a bear or have to fight, amen, a lion or something like that. But that was God was just preparing him for that big giant Goliath. And God, we know the story. David got that sling. He went over across the brook, picked up eight stones. Of, I believe it was five stones, rather. He picked up five stones. Amen. Five represents grace. Amen. God was with him. Amen. He picked up these five stones. Amen. Somebody said, what did he pick up five stones for? He said, because he had, Goliath had four brothers, and he was going to take care of them too. Amen. Amen. I said he had four brothers. He was going to lay it on to them. He wasn't afraid. Because he knew God was able to answer prayer. How many know that? He knew God was able. If he delivered him from the lion and the bear, he's going to deliver him from this Goliath. But some people was never going to have a battle with Goliath because you haven't defeated the bear and the lion yet. You haven't really defeated the enemy yet. Man. But we're going to have to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to eternal life. Amen. We're fighting a battle. And as I said, David... 
he had his trials and he had his troubles. He ran from Saul for many years because Saul was trying to kill him. You know, he had a he, he had a, he was in the king's court at one time, and he was able. Amen. When the king got all upset and he 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 got a uh, 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 mad or whatever it was, he got David to play on the harp and it calmed him down. But it made him mad when he heard. Amen. When David went out to destroy the enemy and he came back with victory. Amen. He said that Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands, and he got jealous. Saul got jealous about that, and he tried to kill David with a javelin. Then when David was there playing on that harp to comfort him, he picked up that javelin and throwed it at him, and, 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 and he got away. David got away, and he was running. He ran for a long time, man, because Saul was out to kill him. I was reading a little bit a while ago, and it was talking about Saul found out where David was. And so he got 3,000 men. Just think about that now. One after one man, 3,000, they weren't just soldiers. They were really trained professional soldiers to go out after Saul. Saul, had, amen, David had to keep fleeing from him, amen, because he was afraid of losing his life, and, amen, and, and, and he didn't want to. He didn't want to die, even under the hands of Saul. So anyway, he, God brought it through. God gave him the victory. Uh, amen. Some people say, well, if I didn't have the, the devil fight me so much, I could be a strong person. And you're going to have the enemy fighting you. I remember one time someone got saved. They were saved several times. And the last time they got saved, they said, oh, you're going to serve the Lord now this time? And he said, yeah, as long as the devil leave me alone. I got news for you. Satan is not going to leave you alone because he doesn't like you. He hates you. He wants your soul. He wants to take you into the pits. Amen. So he's going to do everything he can to hinder you, get you down, get you discouraged. And David had to encourage himself, and I believe we need to encourage ourselves sometime. You ever do that? I have. I've had to encourage myself when things didn't look good and seemed like things wasn't working out right. I had to encourage myself in the Lord. Praise God. But he's the one that fights my battles. I remember that. The scripture tells me the Lord is the one that fights your battles. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord's, the scripture says. And David prayed several times, I was reading, where uh, he had to get the mind of God uh, to go against the enemy and God told him, yes, go out. Go out against the enemy because you're going to win the battle. You're going to win, and you're going to overcome. Let me read that scripture. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt, over, shalt surely overtake him, them, and without fail, recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook of Uzar, where those that were left behind stayed. There was 200 men. They, the battle, they just got done fighting before they came back home. They were so defeat, not defeated, I guess you'd say, weary from the battle that they couldn't cross over the river. There was 200 of them stayed behind. They're going to stay behind to watch over their equipment and the stuff that they had. And then they were, amen, the other 400 went on into the, amen, to pursue after the enemy. And they got everything back. I said they got everything back that they went after. Amen. It says in the 18th verse, it said, and David recovered all that the Amalekites and the carried that carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and there was nothing lacking in them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoils nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Everybody say, David recovered all. Hallelujah. You know, when the devil tries you and tests you and you stand up against him, 
you got victory. I said, you're not going to be denied. We sing that song sometimes, I will not be denied. I will not be denied till Jesus comes and makes me whole. I will not be denied. We're going to fight this good fight. Fight the faith. You know, that's the only way Christians are going to make it is to fight the battle. Now, we don't have battles like they did in the, in the early church. We never had to die. We don't know what tomorrow holds because it could happen. You know, they're happening in other lands. They're in foreign countries. They're taking Christians and, and, and killing them because of their faith. I thank God I live in America. America is one of the blessed countries in the world. Amen. I'm a, I've been in foreign countries. And I tell you, I'm always glad to get back to America. Amen. To my home where I'm free. Praise God. I'm so glad. I'm a, amen. I'm American. I'm just glad you're American. Glory to God. I'm glad. Amen. That I'm saved too. I'm a saved American. Glory to God. And I want to try to win souls into the kingdom. Doing what I can to, t- to try to help people get right with God and get ready to meet Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved Just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be moved In His love abiding, I shall not confiding I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be moved I shall not be I shall not be moved I shall not be I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be I shall not be moved. 